Yesterday's significant set of agreements between Uganda and Tanzania on one part and the oil giants Total and Sinuk on the other is turning to be more significant than many suspect. President Siori Museveni and his Tanzanian counterpart Samia Suluhu Hassan put ink to paper the host government agreement, shareholding agreement and tariff and transportation agreement with French oil giant Total and China National Offshore Oil Company being the implementing partners. The signing, in essence, paved the way for the construction of the 1,443-kilometer East African crude oil pipeline from the Albert and Graben in Bulisa to the port of Tanga at the Indian Ocean in Tanzania. While it may take longer for the oil to flow, the construction of the pipeline is envisaged to have a huge impact on the population and the economy through the injection of nearly $10 billion or over 36 trillion shillings in the first year. The next 10 years are going to be extremely exciting and there will be uh, uh, probably some, one of, some of the fastest years we've had in our economic growth. A large chunk of this money will be spent abroad to purchase raw materials like ridges, pipes and payment of the expatriates. However, according to those familiar with the agreements, what will be spent in the economy is substantial. At least 28% uh, rough numbers of that money, which, which is about $3 billion. Three billion in an economy like Uganda's economy is massive, no doubt about it. You're talking about 13 trillion? Everyone would feel that kind of money. And that is what everyone anticipates. A critical issue is how the ordinary folks can tap into this huge investment into the economy in an industry that demands high standards. The Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises is optimistic about those who are ready for the takeoff of the oil sector. So this is a windfall for Ugandans, but not for everyone, especially for SMEs. It's those red, red ones that are going to benefit. The number of programs that are being implemented to make them ready. The African Development Bank and the Petroleum Authority has just put out a call and they are going to train uh, close to 500 SMEs, I believe, to make them ready to take advantage of these opportunities. Walugembe adds that strict laws have been enacted for provision of local content. But just to mention, 60% of all employees of any foreign entity that wants to work in the oil and gas sector has, have to be Ugandans. Uh, at least 2% of their total budget that they want to spend and contract amount need to be invested in training local Ugandans. The opportunities are in the form of direct and induced jobs of supplies of produce, drivers, constructors and welders who will be required to have attained high standards of proficiency over several years. However, some are grateful for the long time spent in oil negotiations as it has enabled many to obtain substantial experience. 16 years is a long time, but maybe it's been a good idea. Everyone is prepared more than they had always been. What does this mean? I mean, people are able to go to school. Some of us went to school, have come back. That's why we're able to speak to this. Uh, you've had com companies getting certifications, ISO certification, OHS certification, HSE certification. Because, I mean, oil and gas is a really high standard uh, uh, industry. The construction of the crude oil pipeline is envisaged to go over a period of four years, which will then pave way for the oil production envisaged long before the end of 2030. Jackson Onyango, NTV.